Okay, next restoration project. Now I have two of these. They're slightly different. They are two. And uh, once again, at the end of the video, I will tell you about the history of them a little bit more because it takes a long time. There's so much on these to read. This is USMC. Now, I believe this is the Bolo, Bolo knife. It's very heavy. This one is, um, it's not in bad condition. The handle's been patched before, so we're going to clean that up a little bit and redo that, repatch it. I'm going to not take the handle off, try not to, because uh, we want to keep it as original as possible. Get the blade cleaned up really nicely polish now this one would be a field knife i do believe so it would probably have been gun blued so we'll probably do that on this one now the sheath this sheath excellent condition needs cleaning up and uh some conditioner put on it there is a date on the back of it usmc but it's so pressed in and i can't read what the date is but anyway Brass rivets and all. This is all brass. Polish that up nicely. Okay, you got your hanger on there to we'll clip into your pistol belt. What we call a pistol belt now. Utility belts, what they used to call them. That one and this one is slightly different. The uh, sheath on this one is a little bit shorter and the blade is a little bit shorter than that one. And I'm from the pictures I've seen, I think this is the hospital knife. USMC. I can't exactly tell what it is, but uh, Britain. Britain Bridell, maybe something like that. So I'll find out as a researcher. If this is the hospital knife, which. I don't know what the difference would be. It's just a tiny bit shorter. Uh, this one would be high polished, but we'll see. Same on this one, clean up. Now somebody's been on this one with a some kind of orbital sander, it looks like. We've got some little chunks in there, but we'll see if we can smooth those out. The main thing on cleaning of these old knives, you don't want to lose your markings that's on there. Now this sheath, I said a little bit shorter, basically the same brass, except here this is uh, probably stainless because it's not rusted. And uh, this leather is in, it's in good shape, it's just very, very, very dirty. Got to clean that good, best I can, and we'll condition it. And I'll try to make it look as original as possible. Well, there we go. Next two restorations, since they're both basically the same, we're going to do them both at the same time. Let's get to work. All right, I got the handle sanded, all the, most of the old stuff off of it. And I took my little wire wheel on the Dremel, and I cleaned out the patch that was in there, which I believe was um, some kind of wood putty patch, which is fine. But what I'm going to do, that's hickory handle. I've got some hickory wood. I'm going to make some hickory sanding dust. Mix it with some glue and uh, pack it down in there. Let it dry good, then we'll have to sand it off. And I think it'll be just fine. Now this one compared to the other one, this one has steel pins, steel rivets holding it. The other one is brass. So... Uh, that's some kind of significance, and we'll find all that out in, in the history uh, a little later on. But as of right now, I don't have time to go in and look at all that. We got work to do. <laughs>
should be enough. Now we're going to mix up a little bit of homemade patch. I'm going to use this painter's tape. Do my mixing on. And to use to mix it, we're going to use old-fashioned Elmer's glue, school glue, because this will dry clear. This is still good. I used some a while back. It's very old, as you notice. Made in the USA. How about that? Westerville, Ohio. I don't even know if they make it in the U.S. anymore. But anyway, well, let's get us a little stick. It seems like little sticks like I make uh, my epoxy sticks out of. Sure, we got plenty. Put that there. And just take some of our sawdust. I'm gonna dry clear. Plus, this uh, the sawdust will make it. The same color anyway and then we'll put a little bit of stain on top of it before the clear lacquer and you'll never know it now winter time is back it's a little bit cool out here that's why it's i think it's why it's uh want to clump up like that okay let's put a little bit more I think that'll be fine like that. I'm going to start right here. I just want to work it down in there and press it in there. And there's a couple spots on the other side too, but we need to get one side at a time. I think the other handle is push it in there with your finger if you need to. The other side I think is okay. I mean the other knife. We'll see. Ooh, I think my finger's working better anyway. Now you could do this with epoxy as well, but that epoxy will set up pretty quickly. Unless you get the 24 hour kind, then you'll be waiting for a day and a half for it to get dry. And I think it would be quite, quite messy. More so than this, because you wash this off with water. As any carpenter glue, before there was all the carpenter glues, there was Elmer's school glue. That's what most people used. my grandfather used he was a carpenter a shipwright boat carpenter built boats furniture for boats and all that kind of thing and he used the school glue like this Let's 
scraping off of the metal there. I think that's going to be enough. A little bit more right there, maybe. We can sand it off. There's any excess. There we go. Let that dry while that's drying. We'll move on to the other blade and the other handle after I wash my hands. Hang on, I'm getting it all over the camera too. All right, we got this one ready for gun blue. Now the handle on this one was in pretty good shape. I just had to fill just a little bit here and here. And I have all the uh, the old finish off of it. I sanded it off. I did. I left a little bit of the character marks in there from what it was, because we're not trying to make this look brand new, like on all restorations. But uh, we're gonna take some uh, acetone. Clean off the steel, clean the metal. See that coming off of there? That's just metal dust and sanding dust for a ground it, sand it, sanded it, it's uh, hand sanded. Very smooth. I decided to go ahead and gun blue both of these because they're, um, that would be. The more original thing, all military stuff is, uh, most of it subdued. That's what they call it, a uh, gun blue subdued. Because you don't want to be in a combat situation with something shiny. That's why all your weapons are black. And clothing is either camouflaged or, you know, it's just shiny stuff is for the parade ground, not the battlefield. I'm gonna clean it off really good. do the same thing to the wood when I get ready to put the, uh, the finish on there now the other one the handle is walnut I'm almost sure this is oak oak or ash or something like that it's it's a hardwood but it's a lighter color the reason they did that because at the World War II things were Talking about supply shortages now, they really had shortages on things back then. And they used what they had for what they could get a hold of. Alright, set that right there. Hang on. Phone's blowing up. All right, we're gonna do the handle spine first. Q-tip and some gun blue. like that try not to get it on the wood handle but uh get a little bit on there it won't hurt anything probably see that little gap right there the uh 
finish will fill that up. There goes the phone again. Nobody wants to talk to me until I've got my hands full. <laughs> Okay, let's go ahead and do this area here. Like this. And then next we'll go over to the dip tank and dip it. And get the rest of the blade done. Do one more wipe where I just handled it with my hands. Alright, come on, let's go. I'm going to try to do it like this. I'm going to dip the entire blade down in there. for just a minute that's what this gun blue actually does it penetrates the steel turns it black and it's a rust preventative which keeps it from rusting no oh, ain't that pretty now you gotta sit one minute According to the uh, instructions, one minute, rinse it with cold water. Then uh, do the same thing again. Clean it off again, do it one more time. Alright, go through a couple of steps here. It's been rinsed. Now you take it a steel wool. Polish it, that's to get the residue off of there. Try to even it out some. And all these instructions are on the uh, on your bottle of gun blue when you get it. And this is the same for anything you want to gun blue. Guns knife blades, any kind of metal, all the same. You do that. Acetone again, or alcohol, degreaser, anything. I just prefer the acetone because I already have it. It's already sitting out ready to go. See, there's your residue that comes off. Now, go back to the tank, dump it again. The spine's going to be fine, just like it is, because it's going to get covered with a finish from the handle. All right, one more, one more dunk, and repeat the same process, and we'll see what it looks like. All right, dripping everywhere, it's still wet, but uh. The more times you do that, the darker it'll get. I find that two coats is, uh, for most things, are pretty good. All right, got the blade wrapped up to protect it. Just a tiny bit of acetone on the, my rag here. I'll clean off the wood. Clean any oil or anything off of it because I've been handling it pretty good. Cleaned off, got a dry paper towel. Make sure I got that in good. Now we're 
gonna put a coat of clear lacquer on there. First coat of probably at least two, maybe three. I use a foam brush. Spreads it out nice and even. First coat's very thin. I'm gonna let that dry, and then put a second coat. Okay, that's where we fill our little crack in this one. I can still see the crack. But it will not come apart. That's why I was talking about the character marks in it. It's sort of heavy right there because I want it to go in between there. Now chances are these will never be carried and used again. They are part of a collection. So that's going to work out just fine. Make sure we don't have any runs. Now this lacquer, after about 30 minutes, you can recoat it. Lightly, lightly sand it in between. We'll see that here in a little bit. Now this is too heavy to hang up on my little hooks. So we're going to put it right here in the vise. Just like that, let it dry. Now the next one, we're going to do the exact same process, but this one has to be sanded really well because this handle was in worse shape. But we filled it really well, and it feels dry, so we'll wait till the device is free again. Then we'll sand all this and do the blade the same way. All right, let's move our attention to the scabbards uh, for the bolo knives. This one's pretty good shape. This one is also in good shape. It's just very, very dirty. See, I started to dry clean it just a little bit right there with some uh, steel wool. Dirt's coming off. And we're going to put this one to the side and work on this one first. Do the easiest one first. Some saddle soap. A couple of ways to do this. This is the way I like to do it. A little bit of water. Get a soft bristle brush. Work it around till it suds up a little bit like that. Start scrubbing away. Softer bristle brush works well, especially when you don't want to make sure you don't want to mess your thread up. Still in good shape, but it's old. a little more water in there and this room temperature water is a little cool cold front made it cold again our springtime went away for now <laughs> Take a rag. I'm 
wipe it off. See all that dirt coming off there with it. And just continue on all the way around and on the back. Uh, it's going to take a while. We'll get this one done. And this one's really going to take a while. So uh, show you what they look like in a little bit. All right, it's dry from that scrubbing with the saddle soap. And there's still some spots and stains. Got some steel wool. Very gently, small circles. Just get the rest of it off that I can. Remember, I keep saying we can't make it new again. But we can make it look pretty nice. At least it'll be clean and preserved where it won't uh, continue to deteriorate. Like I said, this is in pretty good shape. It hasn't been out in the weather and all you can tell. It's like this, and the back side I'll have to do the same thing. So uh, it's going to take a while. All right, that's about the best we can do on it at this stage. I went ahead and polished the brass up a little bit on the buffing wheel because I've buffed some of it off. I'll touch it up by hand when I get done. But to condition this, we're going to coat it down with mink oil. Because any kind of dye I try to put on there is going to turn it really, really dark colored. And we don't want to do that, I don't think. And this is almost like a wax. It'll go on there and let it sit for a little while and then I'll take it back to the buffer. I've got one wheel over there that's nothing for leather only. It's a clean wheel. Then we'll buff it up and it will shine again. See, there's still dirt in there. This, from World War II to now, that's a long time for dirt to get in something. <laughs> and this will further help preserve it. Like that, so on and so forth. We'll let it dry, and then we'll get back to the buffer. All right, this is the one that was so dirty, and it's still dirty. Uh, I'm going to give it another scrub down and see if we can't get some more of that dirt off of there. And this time I'm going to scrub it with some dishwashing detergent and uh, see if that'll take that off of there. Is this a uh, it's still dirty. Hey, just polishing up our brass rivets here a little bit. And it takes a little while. Pretty good. See these, I didn't get much of it off. Let's get a little. Uh, this is three twenty grit. This is years and years and years worth of uh, oxidation on there. biggest of it off and then that brass so will uh, polish it up nice
Polishing brass, I feel like this should be a drill sergeant standing over my shoulder. <laughs> Alright, here's this one. Got one coat of mink oil on it. We're going to put another coat on there. Let it dry like we did the other one. And this is a darker colored leather when I got it stripped down what I could. <coughs> Pardon me, than uh, the other. But gonna look much nicer than what it did and just like I did over there that one it's gonna put a heavy coat on there and let it soak a little while I've already done the sides and the back and let's put a little more on the back see and there's still dirt in there some but Soap and water did better than the saddle soap, I believe. But there's so much in there. There we go. Boy, didn't those turn out nice. That gun blue finish, that's the way to go. Now, it's not been oiled yet. I'll oil it here a little bit. Very, very nice. Handle came out good. Now the cracks that I filled on both of these, you will still see them. They're there. But that's part of the character and the history of the knife. Now I still don't know exactly the difference in these, but we'll find that out. Uh, very last clip, because we'll be, I'm going to go in and we'll do some reading on the Magic Google machine. Go right there. See, that's that one I filled with the uh, homemade filler. But it's sound. It's not going to come apart. Very nice. Let's hope it don't scratch it inside these sheaths. Got which one went where. There we go. How about that? Nope. No scratching. It's rubbing here and there as it should. Yeah, there's one. Let's take a look at the other one and have another restoration job in the books. There it is. This one didn't pick up to as much shine as the other one on the leather, but it's clean as I can get it. It's uh, very flexible, well preserved now. Uh, I'll, I'll give it one final buff with this after it dries for a couple of hours. There's our blade that goes in here. And this is the way this one came a little bit. It's a little bit shorter sheath than that one. But, uh, okay, looks cool. There we go. Now, see you in a few minutes and we'll read some history about these. All right, here is the, the USMC Bridell, that's what is the one. Now here's um, I'm gonna leave a link to this page. This is David's Blades. He's a collector. Very good page to see all kinds of stuff. And it goes through the whole history. I'm not gonna try to read all of it to you. I'll give you the link. Uh, there's a different. That's a Philippine style there. Get down there, there we go, right there. All right, that tells you all about this is the Hospital Corman knife. It was issued by the Marine Corps during World War II. Okay, intended for clearing brush, cutting wood for litter carriers, shelters. Just a multi-purpose heavy machete, basically, is what they are. And 
uh, goes down through here. Now the prices that he's got listed, uh, from what I saw, I've seen several on eBay and all that. These are selling for around 200 to $400. Uh, to collectors, each some of them even more than that, especially on the auctions, online auctions. So they're very, very valuable collectible knives. Okay, it goes up in price down here. Okay, he's seen many fakes online. This is not a fake, but uh, they are out there. Everything there's something fake about everybody reproduce reproduces something at one time or another but this is the real deal now the other one is um, basically the same thing except it was issued to just marine regular troops not the corpsman but uh, basically the same knife anyway I enjoyed doing the uh, restoration on these I hope you enjoyed the video and once again, I will leave a link to uh, David's Blades collector site. And y'all go check them out. Thank y'all very much for watching. Thank you for your support. And I'll see y'all on the next one.